You're listening to the Dramatic Show Podcast. All right, welcome back to the Dramatic Show Podcast. J Dub, how's it going? Everything's good, man. How are you? Everything's good. Tyrell, what's good? What's up, y'all? Did you uh, you have a good weekend? It was okay. All right. So, I mean, what'd you what'd you do? Um, no, I can't be snatched this weekend. That's, that's <laughs> the three weeks in a row, man. Um, I quit my job. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Why'd you quit your job, Ty? I got a better one. You got a better one lined up? Um, you want to tell the audience what, you, uh, what you're what you going to be doing? Yeah, I'm jumping from car parts to insurance. Oh, insurance. That's that's a that's a jump right there. Like, that's completely different. What made you decide to want to try insurance? Well, the man, it was kind of like fate. I bumped into him, and he liked my personality, and he was like, I think you'd be good. Come under me. All right, so what type of insurance are you going to be selling? Um, healthcare and life. Oh, man, that's cool. That's cool. We, we definitely wish you the best on that. So we're looking forward to that and getting an update on that in a few weeks. I appreciate it. All right, so along with my co-hosts uh, today, guys, I actually invited three of my best friends from childhood to come on to the show. So we just kind of want to talk to them and have a real feel-good show today. Uh, I want to welcome my guest, Cortez Jones. He's a childhood friend of mine. Cortez, say what's up to the people. What's going on, people? How y'all doing? <laughs> <laughs> he was just like, what's up? What's going on? And, Verbatim. And uh, my, also my cousin, <clears throat> Ramon. What's up, Ramon? What's up, people? And my good friend, James. What's up, man? I'm all out here in the world. First studio. You nervous? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to ease into this. Thing right now, yeah? All right, cool, man. I ain't going to play with you too much. But, yeah, like I said, guys, this is actually just a real good feel-good show just to kind of catch up with y'all and, uh, you know, see what y'all been doing these last couple of years. So, again, people, uh, again, we thank you guys for listening in. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started with this show. I want to kind of start with uh, my, my boy James over here. James, man, uh, since I've moved back, you know, we really haven't had too much time to really talk and catch up with each other. I know you're really busy and things like that. What's uh, what's going on with you these days, man? Like with your career, what you been up to? Just hanging around the house, working at a major shop over in Tarpon. Okay, and um, you got a you got... supervisor. Oh, so you're a supervisor now? Yeah. Okay. I thought last week I found out I was a support manager now. Oh, so you're a support manager now? Yeah. Oh, you're actually doing pretty good, man. How long have you been working with cars? Uh, since I'm 12 years old. You know what? And come to think about it, Ramon and Cortez, y'all remember James been paying insurance since he was in like the eighth grade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this guy been, this guy grew up so fast, man. It's ridiculous. Like he was the only person I've ever known that paid car insurance when you were in the eighth grade. Like, you remember that? I yeah. did, did my road test in eighth grade. He did his road test. Kind of he kind of reminds you of those uh, that episode with Saved by the Bell. That big older guy with like the black jacket, like he like twenty years old, walking around. Oh, what? Years. Oh, man. <laughs> I'll tell you. But James, uh, yeah, man, so um, have you kind of thought about branching out doing your own thing? <laughs> I thought about it. I mean, really, truly, right now I'm doing stuff in my backyard. Oh, so you actually got a backyard shop. Yeah, I found a bill bigger one, but, you know, the money low right this moment all because of the economy, so. Yeah, it's, it's kind of kind of a little low here down here in Greenville. Have you ever thought about doing any type of side projects? Well, I used to build cars. Yeah. Remember the Chevelle I used to build? Yeah, I remember the Chevelle. You still got it? Nah, so. Come on, man. You can't sell a classic like that. It was like a 72. 71 Chevelle. Oh, man. It was almost mint condition. I mean, you rebuilt it from scratch. Ground up. When I got it, it was nothing but a motor and a hole. How much did you end up selling it for? $9,000. They stole that from you, man. Chevelle is... I mean, I've seen it go on eBay for at least twenty thousand plus. Like yeah, I, I hate it, but I had to do it with my little boy. He found out he had a little tumor in his brain, uh, and I had to send the Duke. Uh, and all because my insurance won't cover the all expenses paid up there. It was like the, the test would like be like like twelve thousand dollars. So my my thing is, why wouldn't your insurance cover the whole thing? A percentage had to be paid up front. Are you serious? The big like, test. Come see me in a couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> I have to. <laughs> Man, so I you. sold a car to pay for the, the testing done. And it came out, it's good. The two man got no blood going to it, so he's fine and wild bunch of little. That's good, man. How old is your, your son these days? He'd be 12 on, in August. Oh, 12 years old, man. Like he was telling me earlier when we were talking, man, you just, uh, we're just, we're getting old, man. Yeah. We are getting old. 
All right, cool, man. Good stuff. We'll catch check back with you in a little bit. All right. Cortez, man, what's what's going on, man? Cortez, for those of you guys who don't know, Cortez is probably one of my oldest friends that are now part of my blood. I think we've known each other since we were, what, like three years old? Something like that. Something like three years old, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Diaper buddies? <laughs> <laughs> you don't know well. My cousin down to the end, that Ramon, like, he was a diaper buddy. So we've been knowing each other. Y'all yeah, like rugrats, man. <laughs> the rugrats. Yeah. That's the shit boxes of huggies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So Cortez, what's what's been going on with you, man? I know you uh you've been going to school for like the the longest yeah, time, yeah. man. Like tell professional us. student. <laughs> Say you're a professional student. Yeah. So uh, yeah, tell us a little bit of back background about your uh, your theology, seminary school, right. and all that good stuff, man. Yeah, so um I graduated from the school in 2010, so. And what, what school was that? That was, that was Southeastern, so. Southeastern, Southeastern for you, those of you who don't mm-hmm. know, that's actually in Wake Forest, North Carolina, mm-hmm. right? Yup, yup, correct. So, I was there um, from 06 to 2010, and graduated from there, and I got a, uh, an undergraduate in Christian Studies and Humanities. Yeah. So, and then from there, I, I, I kind of took a break, and um, I eventually, um, got certified with Wake Tech. Okay. And so, long story short, mm-hmm. and now I teach there. So I teach um, what's called ABE, which is Adult Based Education. Ah, okay. At, at Wake Tech. So essentially, I just teach reading and writing, and also teach uh, communication. Man, how so much patience do you gotta have to actually teach adults like that, man? Right. Like, I mean, do you really need a lot of patience as if you're talking to like a little kindergartner or something like that? Like, talking to adults all day, man, like, it's almost like glorified babysitting. Like, <laughs> no, you're teaching no, at that level? No, 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 it's not like that. It's not like that. So, so a lot of the class are second language learners. So, mm-hmm. English is that second language. So, yeah. they're trying to improve it. So, a, lo- a large part of the class is that. Now, most of these people, they already have visas or they're trying to, to get their, their green That's cards? a good question. I, I'm not sure if their status, we're just kind of like hands off on that. Yeah, okay. So, I'm not, I'm not 100% sure. So, I mean, like, are they learning like the basic words of like, uh, like English? I don't know, just like, like where are y'all at with the, the levels? Yeah, right? so when I, when I first started with Wake Tech, I was in ESL. Mm-hmm. And so at that level, yes, it's real basic, like, this is a pen. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like that. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and so pretty much you have to s- start from ground one. Start from ground one? Yeah, yeah, from the, from the, from the foundation. And so, but what I teach now, they can have a conversation. Mm-hmm. So right now it's more of um, how do you read something and, and understand it? Yeah. You know, so like main ideals, supporting ideals, that type stuff. Okay. And so that's what I'm doing. So I'm teaching them that. And I mean, yeah, it's been great. It's been great. It's been a great experience. So as I was saying earlier, so some of, some of the students are uh, second language learners. So they English is their second language. And then there's a small part of that that are native speakers so these are people who didn't graduate uh, high school but oh, they're okay. trying to uh, get a GED or, or something like that oh. so, yeah. and uh, from what you were telling me a few weeks ago I think you're going back for your masters is mm-hmm. that right? yeah that's correct mm-hmm. yeah so um, just got approved so um, I started in the fall starting in the fall starting in the fall yeah. congrats yeah I appreciate that appreciate that yeah, yeah. congrats yeah, thank you. Thank good you. stuff, man. Yeah. Good stuff. That's, 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 that's a compliment. Yeah, good stuff. And uh, <laughs> foreign life. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. And uh, last but not least, I want you guys to welcome my cousin to the show, Ramon Bellamy. Most of everything I've, I've always learned, you know, I always looked up to him, and he's, he's taught me so much over the years. And Ramon, like, I know you're not too much of a talker, man. We'll get to you a little bit later when we start talking about a, a very important topic. <laughs> but uh, if you don't mind. Yeah, it's all good. Just skip over me. <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, just tell us a little bit about yourself, though, Ramon. Just a little bit, man. Um, a little bit about myself. I'm just an entrepreneur, small business owner, you know, uh, man's right activist. You know, I mentor a lot of people, try to give advice, encourage people to do better in life. And, you know, that basically yeah. describes me. And for those of you who don't know, actually, I actually got the idea of podcasting from uh, Ramon. He actually came up with the concept last year. We were actually going to do actually our first show with me and him. 
Um, he just kind of just say, hey, man, let's just kind of hold off on it for a little bit. I'm a little bit more pushy about it. But uh, I definitely want to try to still do that podcast show with you too as well, man. So hopefully we'll get we'll get jumping on that soon as well. Yeah, I appreciate, you know, you doing your thing. I, uh, I love your show. I listen to a couple of episodes, and, you know, it's a good show. Have you changed your mind about doing a podcast like on your own or what, what do you um, I still do a podcast on my own. I just don't... Uh, record it so people can download it so you gotta catch it live when I do it yeah and yours is uh, on a couple of our uh, internet stations from um, yes you can find it on hillhopdugout.com slash radio I'm on that and uh you know, we do it mostly late nights around 11 and 12, usually on the weekend. Okay. So, again, viewers, if you uh, if you guys didn't hear that, though, you guys definitely check that out and uh, check him out on that. And, Mona, again, we'll come back to you a little bit later. We got some good stuff that we want to talk to you about later as well. All right. So, um, again, man, I just want to try to make the show uh, more interesting, talking about careers and things like that. Um, this show is pretty open. We probably talk about a lot of things. John, um, I kind of want to start with you a little bit, man. Uh, I know we was talking... Uh, a few weeks back, I was telling you that my employer, I can't actually say their, their names on air, but uh, they said one of the main shows that they were interested in talking about was talking about finance. You know, I guess finance is a really big thing right now these days. Um, people people just, you know, they're, they're struggling right now and uh, they're trying to find ways to improve their lives. So just the regular nine to five at this point, it's, it's just not doing it for a lot of households, man. I know like down here in North Carolina and somewhere in the South, like the, the income and uh, the job growth market is picking up, but it's not picking up at a, an exuberating rate as most people want it to. So you've, you've been doing quite a bit over the last couple of years. Um, financing, you've been in the car industry. Um, yeah. You do you do almost 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 everything. Talk to us a little bit more about what people can do to kind of improve themselves. Like you know, just coming up over the next few months, man. Like, what are some of the things you feel like people can do to just start bettering themselves, just not depending on the nine to five? Uh, a lot of it's going to come to a lot of research, and people move to certain areas and they get stuck. They feel like they plant themselves there, right? And you can't leave. But do research on cities that are growing. If you're in a city that's just failing. Like, for example, we're moving away from Greenville. Yeah. Because Greenville's kind of flatlined. There's no growth to it unless you're in the medical field. And for those of you people who, uh, when he says Greenville, this is actually in Greenville, North Carolina. I'm sorry, John. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. So we're moving to Charlotte. And Charlotte's a, a growing city. It's a big economy. It's a banking economy, but a banking-based economy. Right. So do some research on where you want to live. If you're going to continue to try to make... X amount of dollars. Just say you want to do $100,000. If you live in a city, its medium income is $26,000. How hard is it for you to get it's to hit $100,000 yeah. a year? So you have to get creative with money. You'll either have multiple jobs or just kind of live down with family and parents. Mm -hmm. So do your research. Make sure you take care of your credit. I know some of us run into a lot of problems, but credit is a big thing to keep. It it's a big commodity. You know, banking insurance runs the industry, but credit gets all the people everything they need. You can't buy a house, you can't buy a car, you can't take a you know emergency medical bills, you can't do anything. Right. But people with great credit, they get taken advantage of because they get solicited. So be smart about the credit that you take out. There's a lot of debt to income that you have to think about. What your ratios are, how much you make, how much you got going out. Mm -hmm. Be careful of what you make a year before taxes. You before taxes. Think about your take home mm -hmm. pay. Huh. So what you take home, if you're making thirty-two thousand, you're taking home nineteen thousand dollars a year. So you got to be careful about that. Just make sure that you're funding yourself to live rather than trying to live yourself. Yeah. Okay. Do your research. That's the biggest thing. So always make sure first thing you do is you want to do your research. Mm -hmm. Now, Cortez, we was we were talking. Uh, this was a few months back, man. We were just talking about the, the different jobs and things that we're working. Like at, at one point, you were working almost like three jobs at a time. At one point, right? Mm -hmm. What were you What were you doing? Yeah. So, um, in addition to the teaching, I was doing a lot of independent contract work. So, basic jobs like Uber, Lyft, Postmates. So there are a lot of uh, independent contract jobs that you can do to um, get you to where you need to be at. Yeah. And so, uh, so those were a few of them. Now, your biggest thing was you wanted to make sure you had to have the opportunity to get out of debt really fast, right. like credit card debt. Mm -hmm. What would you tell the viewers? Or probably, I guess, the simplest and the quickest way to just if they're just saying, "Well, hey, you guys are just talking that, but you know, I got a lot of debt going on. Like, right. what can I do to get out of this debt so fast?" I mean, I think eighty percent of it is mindset that you have to you have to start to live like a savage 
Yeah, and they leverage. You know what I mean? So what I mean is that you like this is emergency mode. So you can't be you have to cancel everything that's not a necessity. So, you know, Netflix or whatever, that cable, um, you know, cancel it all. You you have to find out where your money is going because it's leaking somewhere. Mm-hmm. You know, it's leaking somewhere. And so the only way that you're gonna find that out is you're gonna have to write down how much money you make, how much money you're spending, and then add and subtract at the end of the month so you can see where your money's going at. Right. Otherwise, you don't really have a picture of where your money's going at. And so, you know, they call this the financial diary, yeah. you know? And so I, I think that something as simple as that can be very beneficial uh, for you is to know where your money is going at, know where it's leaking at, and then, you know, stop the leaking. So, so getting rid of uh, all necessities, um, I'm sorry, getting rid of things that are not a necessity. Also, if you have a car that's $23,000, $24,000, you should sell that car. You should sell it? Yes, absolutely. And why would you Why would you do that? Uh, it's just a waste of money. It's mm-hmm. a waste of money because you need to get out of debt. Yeah. You need to get out of debt. And so you can find a reliable car um, for like $5,000, a Honda Fit or a Honda Accord. And um, and then the gas tank is small. It's a small gas tank. So it's $20 to fill it up. It can last you all week. And that makes sense. And actually, I was so talking like to Tyrell Ty about that. She was kind of telling me the same thing because, again, Tyrell used to work at AutoZone. Um, mm-hmm. Again, like your expenses, like, tell me, talk to me a little bit. <clears throat> like, um, I've always, like, kind of flashy cars a little bit. But once I started working at AutoZone and the parts, yeah. they, yeah. you know, that's money. That's extra money. And... Like Alexis, you would spend seventy dollars on a part that would normally be thirty-two dollars on a Toyota. Mm-hmm. So it's like exactly. some people don't think Lexus is Toyota. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So and that was another thing. Like you really just paying for the name. So so. people should be real like BMW and stuff. I said that to him when he came to visit me. Like, yeah. oh, I'm not, that's an expensive Get car. You a Honda Fit. Call Cortez. Yeah, and take you where you need to go. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> but then I had I to think you. about how much I drive. Yeah. Like, I wanted something good on gas. And what is uh, what is your work commute? Now? Yeah. Oh. An hour back and forth. That's a commute. Oh, where you? Wow. Yeah, that's so close. Yeah. About 28 minutes, damn back. I mean, you know, there. Oh, okay, damn yeah, back. back. Oh, okay. And, and Moan, do you want to add anything about, I guess, more so the mentality? Like, change your um, mentality about that. I agree with uh, what Cortez said mostly, mainly. Uh, everybody's situation is different, so. But yeah, you shouldn't have a, a be in debt with a $30,000 car. And, you know, that money could go for more things. And, you know, when you get financial literacy, you know, interest. You don't want to pay a lot of interest. Just give yeah. money away, you know? So, you know, it's different things you learn as you... Some things just a youth thing you don't know till you get... Because we ain't... Bo- right. don't teach financial literacy in school. So exactly. These things you got to learn as you go. Mm-hmm. Or you got to seek the knowledge, you know what I mean? Because nobody's giving this knowledge away. Either, so you got to want to learn it. Exactly. Want, you know, and um, like you say, you got to make a budget. You know, most people don't know how much money going in or out. You got to know what's going on with your money for you to know, you know? I listened to a lot of Dave Ramsey, and he was saying yeah, some yeah. of the things that Dave yeah, Ramsey yeah, said. Yeah, you know what I mean? And uh, you know, I agree with a lot of things Dave Ramsey. You know what I mean? Yeah. If, if people are familiar with, you know, Dave Ramsey, kind of popular, and he give financial yeah. advice, and he talk bad about debt. And he right, you know. It's kind of hard though, because we basically work now just to pay bills. And see, we, we need to stop that. Like, at what point do we just stop working from paycheck to paycheck? Like, how do we stop that? Like, what do we do? Yeah, like like he said. Uh, but live below your means for one. You know, you can't live above your means. If you know, you can't buy every new new Jordans or new gadgets and everything coming out. You got to save money and invest money, you know. That's right. You can't, you can't, you know, you can't just spend money on frivolous things, you know. You got to reward yourself at the same time, but you got you to learn to invest money, you know. If you ever look at like an interest calculator and if you just invest like $100 a month for so many years, you know, you, you got your retirement right there, you know. Yep. So most people don't. Look at it like, like I said, they don't teach for them to education, so you gotta see that now. 
So, I mean, why is it, why don't they teach things like that in basic elementary school and in high school? Like, why don't they teach that? It's almost like it's almost set up for them to actually set people it up. It is just set going up to death. because they don't want nobody, that's how they make money off it. If you knew, if you were smart and they want to pay no interest, how the rich man will make money off of, you know, selling their car and stuff like that. They they banking on your ignorance, you know? Yep. Like, um, I can't remember that. another guy listened to, like you said, you can tell what type of, neighborhood you in by the type of business you see. You know, when you come to a neighborhood, you see the rent, the own, the rental wheels. You know, that's a 500, 600 credit score neighborhood because that's who they targeting. Yeah. yeah. People with that type of credit score. You know, they ain't got bad credit, but they got just good enough credit. We can rent you some wheels and stuff, man. You should just pay for the wheels, save your money and buy the wheels. Yeah. You know. That's that the thing. You pay out cash. Like, sometimes you can get for 1200 bucks, like the you know, you go finance. Why are you gonna finance some rims? Because you, it's like, because I, I worked at Rental Wheel and you got the 90 day same as cash. Yeah. Bit, but see, the gimmick behind that is you gotta, you, you gotta know your salesperson. You have to at least know, like, engage a conversation, know that they're trustworthy because they hide fees and mm. they don't tell you everything. And I can't tell you that because then I jeopardize my job. Right. Well, mm-hmm. same thing. Like me and John, we used to sell cars, man. Mm-hmm. Same thing applies, right? Same thing. Same thing. We used to run them too. Y'all used to run. Them? <laughs> <laughs> used to run. Them. Well, we can't say a whole lot because you sold me a car. Bring it out. <laughs> yeah, I, I did. Well, you know. get. Well, I still got that car. To this day, I still got it in my yard. Yeah, yeah, still right. car, so. You got that nine cars, right? Yeah, the one that I got home. <laughs> it paid off yet? It paid. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I got one car in my yard. And I, I got it for thirty five hundred dollars. I got to find that to a bank, making payments only a hundred dollars a month. That's not too. No, it ain't too bad. bad. Like I see some folks yeah. soon to get their taxes the first of the year. How many folks do you see they get the taxes the first of the year? They ain't got a job, but they go off and buy a like a thirty thousand dollar car for a down payment of five thousand dollars on it. In 90 days, it repoed. <laughs> I mean, why are you going to spend that money? Like Cortez said, why have a $30,000 car? Yeah. You know, Take well, that I'm, money, buy it out of cash. I was, uh, when you said that, it made me think about something. I was reading this book, it was called um, Understanding Poverty by uh, Ruby Payne. And so one of the things that um, she was getting like, in the book was the, the po- poverty mindset, the middle class mindset, and the wealthy mindset. And so as it relates to money and food, so let me give you an example about food first and then go to money, right? So with food, um, the, the question that's asked in poverty is, did you eat enough? Do you have enough? The middle class is, um, what was the quality of the food? And then the upper class it is, um, how was the food presented? Right, the presentation is what matters, right? Upper class, middle class, lower class. So when it comes to money uh, and poverty, you spend it. Middle class, you manage it. And in upper class, you invest it. And so the reason why people spend money automatically in poverty is because there is no future. And so what matters is today. You're, you're saying true. that. That's true. You're saying that people feel like they don't have a, a real future. Mm-hmm. Huh? Exactly. That's the mindset of generational poverty. That's a little different from situational poverty. So situational poverty is tragic event, you know, deal, mother died, dad died, and you're in poverty. But generational poverty is, you know, generations you've been you've been in poverty for generations. And so that mindset is uh, is steeped in people. And so because there is no future, what is important is today. Right. And since today is in, is what is important, you enjoy it. Yeah. You have to enjoy it. Right. You have to somehow um, bear the pain of poverty. Mm-hmm. And that's one way to bear the pain of poverty is celebrating now. Yeah, so. Picking up promise tomorrow. Right. So go ahead, right. take it today by your hand, go ahead uh-huh. snatch. Mm-hmm. And, and in the middle class and upper class, they think about the future, period. And so it's just, the mindset is, is, is everything. Yeah, and Ramon, you want to add something <clears throat> to that? Yeah, it's what I would call the uh, lottery mindset. That's mm-hmm. what I like to describe it as because, you know, instead of saving that money and invest, making real investments, mm-hmm. they steady buying lottery tickets, hoping to win. When they if they win the money, they ain't gonna do nothing with it because they ain't got the financial education to go with it. They gonna, you know what I mean? So I call it the lottery mindset. You can't wish on a lottery. Of it. Playing a lottery is cool, but yeah. you can't. You know, that's that can't be your, your uh, retirement. You yeah, I mean? yeah. <laughs> no, you read about that. Yeah. 
And something, Cortez, you touched on more so about food and, and poverty and things like that. People with less means, man, how, how can we get healthier, mm. you know, if we don't have the means to, you know, a lot of people say that, you know, organic food and right. the, the better, better food is actually more expensive. What can we do to still try to eat healthy and have a, a really healthy lifestyle if we're living below our means? Right. I mean, that's not entirely true. Because um, you can buy salad. But no what about trying, no what about for a household? Okay. What about a household with uh, right. three kids? Got you, got you. What what can we do about it? So that? my mind, like I wouldn't, I can't really speak to that because I don't know how much money that would take. You know, because I, you know, I don't have a family, so I can only speak for um, myself when it comes to that. So, um, but I'm thinking about what I eat on a normal basis, and so pretty much I have some soup. Some organic soup, which is like two dollars fifty cent. And you, you do that? Do you eat that like five days a week? Yeah, roughly? three to four days a week. If not that, then I'm eating some some beans. Oh wow! I mean, like yeah. when you say you're living as a savage, like uh, to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> beans, 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 beans. Right. But here's the thing, though. Here's oh, the thing. Here's and you're the not thing. a meat eater, right? You're not a meat eater. I, uh, some, well, I ate some chicken then. <laughs> <laughs> he told us chicken tenders. <laughs> <chicken. laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I don't know if y'all believe me because <laughs> you just saw me killing some chicken tenders. But but yeah, for the most part, I am. Though. I am. Yeah, I am vegetarian. And James, right. I, I want to come over to you, man. I know, like over the, the last couple of years, man, you kind of had some health issues and things like that about your eating habits and things like that. Um, you actually you have a son, and uh, you know you have a significant other. So what is it like in your household like these days, man? Like you know, what do you guys? Oh man, it's bad sometimes. What do you mean? I mean, <laughs> I mean, terrible. I mean, we got two incomes coming in. Like I said, I'm I'm a support manager, yeah. and she's she's running for a transport now. Oh, she's uh, she's on transport now. Yeah, okay. um, medical transporter. Mm -hmm. She made pretty good money for it. But like some nights, like I said, if we make a big meal, I survive. Like big pot of spaghetti, mm. take it over the next day. Yeah, man, I mean, you gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do. Like I said, you can buy a pack of hamburger and some noodles, throw it together, and make a big pot. I mean, you got three days. Hey, leftover ain't bad. Yeah. <laughs> My thing is, spaghetti it tastes good after it warms up. <laughs> I mean, hey, you gotta think about it. Yeah. You're right, though. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know a whole lot of people like Roman noodles. I mean, I don't know. I don't care. Roman noodles. I think everybody that went to college, man, had like their face. Roman noodles. I still eat them, bro. Roman noodles. I still eat them with hot sauce. I can't eat with them. hot sauce. It's a delicacy in my house. <laughs> <laughs> are they like romaine dinner or something like that? No, uh, the house goes crazy. Who gets small? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. 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 I don't I mean, so yeah, I mean, what, what else is going on? What you guys, uh, what else you guys want to talk about? This is kind of like an open forum today, man. We can just kind of talk about anything. What's, uh, what's, what's been going on? Um, anything like in the news or anything like that you guys want to talk about that y'all kind of been keeping up with, Ty? Anything you've been keeping up with? Not lately, as far as news-wise, other than that. Oh, fifteen-year-old that got. Yeah, tell, tell me a little bit about it. Y'all was talking about it, but like outside, but I really, I haven't really heard too much about it. So what, what's going on with that? Well, he was a, um, a mistaken identity case. Mm -hmm. where, um, Kevin, New York? Yeah, yeah. in the okay, Bronx. I heard about it. Yeah, yeah I told him. Yeah. Yeah. Games, right? the girl, yeah. 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 Yeah, she, she got him to come so to the she house. Don't... They called him. Or she got him to agree to come to the house. They called him at the bodega on the way up there. And it was sad. And then they was trying to close down the bodega because they felt like they wasn't help. They didn't help him. But they was. If you watch the videos, um, they really was trying to help him. But mm -hmm. they probably was scared was themselves. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. scared themselves. Oh, they kicked him out of the. Um, they kicked him out of the bodega, though. No, but he was telling him to. I watched the interview. The man said that he called the cops several times, and it was taking him so long. He told Junior that it's better that you run to the hospital. It's only a block away. Yeah, it's better that you run. Mm -hmm. And he died oh, right to the twenty feet oh, from the emergency room door. Yeah, that was messed up, man. Like mistaken identity, like how can y'all? 
you know, mistaken the wrong person. But it wasn't mistaken identity if she targeted him. Oh, yeah. Like, she targeted him. That was a mistaken identity. They, yeah. They, they was set up. She should have been, like you said, locked up too. Why did, why did the mistaken identity part come up? Why did they try to say that for her? Because her boyfriend recorded her them running the train on her or something. Mm -hmm. And so to avoid her boyfriend getting hurt, she picked Junior because Junior looked a lot like Oh, okay. Okay. So she just lied on an innocent. She did set somebody up, but she lied on an innocent person. Right. Yeah. That's, that, that's that they definitely should be locked up because that's messed up. You know what I'm saying? You lying plus you are an innocent person. I mean, and if you're part of the murder, like the accessory parts, especially if you're the one that planned and committed, how are you not locked up? Yeah, you the orchestrator. Right. No, this is interesting. I definitely got to uh, definitely got to get some more information about that. All right, so um, I guess let's uh, we can kind of get back on uh, another topic I want to talk to you all about. Uh, it's more so uh, I was talking to a few a few of my other friends, man. Uh, you know, they were telling me, oh, "Listen, man, uh, you know, it's just getting kind of hard out here trying to trying to find a job when you actually have a uh, you actually have a background and you got misdemeanors and you got felonies and things like that." It's kind of hard to actually find a job so my thing was i was actually telling them i said listen man you guys can't really depend on a nine to five and an individual to give you a job you actually have to take things into your own hands to to survive like you never should allow somebody else to dictate how you're going to make a living so with that being said i kind of want to talk to uh touch bases with ramon and uh, Mon, i know you've been a uh you know you've been a one-time felon a couple of years back and jonathan two times <laughs> Oh, two times. Okay. Not one time, but two. Two Bishop, times. Bishop, Bishop, Bishop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And now, uh, John. Vincent Street. Yeah. At two times. Diamond, but, 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 uh, you know, uh, black unemployment, the lowest it's ever been. So, if where, we, job, where are we at right job. now with the uh, the numbers on that? Um, I don't know the exact numbers, like four percent, five percent. Last time I, uh, I heard something about it, but you know, everybody I know, and I know people, you know, I know some bad people. Man. They got jobs. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. if they got jobs, somebody else can get jobs. You so know what I'm for the people that I, I just told you that they feel like, you know what, they can't get no jobs or anything like that, you know, what are some alternatives that they can do to uh, you know yeah. make a living for themselves? Yeah, um if you don't want a job, uh, work for a traditional job, you could uh be an entrepreneur, which I encourage anybody, whether you got a record or not, to be an entrepreneur, because you know, in the black community we need more entrepreneurs and owners and everything. But uh yeah, uh, you know, internet is a good start for entrepreneurs, you know, because you don't take much. Most people got a phone or a laptop, and it don't take much to get started, so now, no way. When you when you talk about going on the internet and things like this, the first thing people are going to say, well, most of those jobs are scams and things like that. What, what are some things that you would recommend that they can probably start online that's pretty simple and something, well, I guess, with a low investment? Or actually, probably no investment at all. No investment, um... E-commerce, that's big these days, drop shipping. You can get started with drop shipping with zero investment because, you know, somebody else has all the, you know, the breakdown drop shipping. Somebody else supply, ships the item out. They purchase from you and you forward the order to the supplier and you can start with that with zero investment or very small investment. And I know we, uh, and I'm not going to say your, your, the name of your eBay store, but you're doing pretty good with eBay right now. Yeah, eBay and um, I sell on eBay and Amazon. And, uh, Amazon takes a little bit more investment than eBay. You can get started with eBay with zero dollars, but Amazon you might need a hundred dollars or something to get started. What do you What do you think your uh, your success came in at for me? Because I know me and me and Jonathan, we actually tried to do that a couple of years. That's actually when we first met. We we actually tried to do our store, man, and. We had so many scammers and things like that buying things from us, and eBay will actually still charge us for the listings. And our eBay store failed. Like, where where did you succeed at? Like, talk talk to the audience about that. Um, I can't. It was basically try and fail. Uh, you know, the main thing is finding items that sell well and that stay in stock. You know, because you don't want to uh, when you lose credibility on eBay is if you sell the items or you can't fulfill the order or you got to cancel orders. So, and they got a lot of software and programs out that automate the the process. The process, you know. So. Do you uh, can you tell the audience a little bit about some of those softwares that you would probably recommend? Um, one of them is DSM or Shopmaster or uh, 
DS Genie. And these are drop shipping software that you can get started with, with zero investment or ten dollars. You probably need like ten dollars to use the software to get started. Now, some of the uh, the felons that feel like they say, "Hey, you know what, man? I've been locked up like the majority of my life. I don't really know how to go to a computer and do all the stuff that he's talking about." At this point, what would you recommend for them to do? Um, I would recommend, you know, because the world is. is Computer is the future, you know, PCs and technology is the future, so, you know, I would recommend taking a course, going to your local community colleges, usually somebody give them a free uh, intro to computers courses, and I would suggest taking one of them, because if you don't take it, you're going to be left behind, you know, because technology, you know, you got to know how to work a phone and a computer and things of that nature, check an email. You know, and some people find that stuff hard, but I don't know how they're going to hope, you know, unless <laughs> they can be stuck in the past, you know what I mean? If nothing changes, so I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> Come on, bomb, oh my God. You know how DEA, ICE yeah. is? You know I got two citizenship, man. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> don't worry, we'll, we'll edit it out. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you getting next to it. That's good stuff, man. Good yeah, stuff. but, you know, that's the only way that, you know, Technology is advancing so fast, so you got to keep up with technology. Right. You know? Yeah, so. you do. You do. Now, Jonathan, I, I know you've uh, you've been a felon as well, man. Um, how how was the journey like for you, man? Just like after getting that felony, and then just you know pulling everything together and just being to where you're at these days. It was tough, man. I had to I had to actually suck up and take the job in construction for a long time. So I worked in construction for years. And just trying to get out of construction, I got hurt at work, had to have a surgery, so I was out for four years. Um, and I can tell you, you're talking about starting from the bottom, bro. Mm -hmm. When I went into um, workers' comp, our house went into food stamps. We were on easy. We were on all kinds of support. Yeah. And it was only supposed to last for a few months. And that few months turned into four years. Mm -hmm. So after the four years, I kind of just sat through life. So I really couldn't find a job, although I needed to find one. And it came that time I had to find one. I applied everywhere, 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 everywhere. I just happened to get into the car game. Yeah. A sales manager position, mm -hmm. or a salesperson position. And then from there, it was just skills, skills, mm -hmm. skills, mm -hmm. skills, skills. Skills is the only thing that catapulted me up. Yeah. And because I stayed clean, well, I ain't gonna say I was clean for anything, not like drug wise, but like record wise, I, I ended up violating later, but mm -hmm. I created myself a position in the, in the city that people knew who I was. So if I went to go look for a job or I went to go to certain places, Everybody knew I was, so, so now I can go find a job anywhere I so want So the key to. term for that part right there is also networking. I guess that would play a big factor yeah, in that yeah, network. networking. So yeah. it goes back to the old saying about it's not sometimes what you know. Who you, who know, you, know, know. Who you know. I'm sorry, but you can take John. Yeah, I mean, like Ramon said, you got to start. You got to start putting yourself out there, too, for your own company. So, and you know, you worked in the car game. It's easy for the situation to flip for any company. Yeah. They'll replace you as quick as they can. Yeah. If you start making more money, you don't align to what a manager has or what their focus is, they'll get rid of you quick, yeah. no matter how well you perform. So, you know, I got an opportunity to get into the tattoo business, own a tattoo shop. I won't say how I got there, but I had a tattoo shop, closer we're moving it to Charlotte. I got a company that does lead generating marketing for insurance, for insurance agents, Riot Come See Me. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you actually helped me get something yeah. Created, yeah. On my own tools. Yeah, they're uh, they're just kind of they're hitting me up every day, man. They're hungry. They're actually overseas, and like the contracts over there come pretty easy. I know, like people always say, let's keep the jobs in America, man. But sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do to really get that business going. It's part of business. Yeah, it's one part of business. That's money. And I'm, I'm more, I think you got at least what two or three that work for you, right? Yeah, I got a couple from uh, out of Morocco. Yeah, and he, he does all like your social social media postings and yeah, they work they work good, man. For you know, you pay them less, you know, than you pay them American American people so spoiled. You got yeah. yeah, yeah. I got call agents out of out of Jamaica. <laughs> I'm ready to go visit. Yeah, <laughs> I want to go see the center. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Ramon's right. You have to start your own your own project. You have to create some of your own destiny. Yeah, even if it's part time, just. Yeah. You know, if you work a regular nine to five, 
sell pencils or something on the side, you know. Mm -hmm. You got to do something on the side because nothing is guaranteed. And that little small business, could, a lot of big businesses, Fortune 500 started from people's part-time businesses. Yeah. It just took off over the years. And I'm not smart enough to go back and get my master's. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And Cortez obviously isn't married, so... Uh, y'all ladies pay attention because he's getting ready to do something for me for us in a little while yeah he's uh he's actually <laughs> going to be a part of our dating game so he's going to come back on the show so you guys be looking out for that we're going to force him to come back just to let that. me know what that date is so uh, i won't be there <laughs> <laughs> good stuff good stuff so again guys uh thank you guys for listening to the uh the joe maddox show podcast uh, what was that? Who, who was the beast rapper in the booth? That's what I want to know. Uh, it was actually both of those guys. Come on. <laughs> both of those guys. Yeah, it was both of those guys. They, we actually we actually did have a, a, a George, actual rap man. group. Um, He's drunk. He was, was drunk. Uh, 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 I wish I had an MP3. Here's a rapper. <laughs> Wait, what'd you say? I wish I had an uh, MP3 file of the uh, audio. Yeah. He held up to the red here. No, I actually, uh, I got a, actually, Cortez, your brother actually had most of our, uh, our music actually on an MP3, come to think about it. Really? Yeah. And yeah, Ty says she will out battle anybody. <laughs> yeah, Ty got balls. She, she rapping too. Ty got balls. I got chocolate balls. Uh-oh. Twins. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, so again, guys, this was actually a, a real good show. I appreciate you guys for coming on and just uh, talking a little bit here, man. And we, we really don't get a chance to see each other these this much these days. You know, I know you guys got families and careers and things like that, but I really appreciate y'all for coming on here, talking, uh, entertaining, the uh, or listening to our, our viewing audience and so forth. Um, any last words, uh, Ramon? Um, any is there any way to get in contact with you? Um, yeah, if you can follow me on social media, Jazz Two Seven Four, Twitter, Instagram. You got any questions? All right. So any any questions for Ramon, you guys can uh, hit him up again at Judge274. Cortez, uh, any last uh, words you want to just say? Well, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, it was a pleasure to be on the show and, um, you know, enjoy the conversation. I don't have any. I'm off social media, so I'm on a hiatus. Man, I weigh 338 pounds. Mm. What's your height? 6'1". Uh, your age? Uh, 37. I can't remember my age right <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I thought I was 35. I don't even worry about my age no more. Hey, put your hands on the table. <laughs> got some meat cleavers. I mean, it's big. It's big. I take one chair up. I mean, I'm like, damn, what, the next Andre the Giant. I'm telling you. It's McKenna came. Yeah, it's McKenna. Yeah, McKenna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you imagine busting my knuckles on the hood of a car? <laughs> <laughs> Man, look, I'm going to put some more cleavers on the table. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. I mean, I guess if we, if you guys weren't doing what you were doing, like right now, your careers, if you could choose what you want to do, Ty, what would you be doing right now? Probably. So how, how long have you been rapping? Like Since I was like nine. So you, again, like most of the beers are already familiar with you. You come from New York. You're, you're up top, girl. You, uh, it's BX or Brooklyn? Brooklyn. Brooklyn all day. Brooklyn all day with Ty. <laughs> well, who are some of your favorite rappers? Um, Biggie. Would you put him in your, your top five? Biggie is going to be my well, favorite. What's your top five? Let me, let me just put you on the well, spot here. <laughs> my top five, you can't, in, to me, I can't include Jay, Biggie, or Nas or any of them because they classics. You can't, you know. They can't, no, they you still can put them in your top five. Yeah, they don't. They, 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 they can't be rated. They passed that. Okay, so. so to me, my oh top my five would be Fabulous. Jada Kiss, and you know when you say so, Jay Fabulous is number one, mm -hmm. and basic based upon his skill set. You and Drake. Well, if you want, to, technically, it would be Fabulous than Drake. You actually put Drake on your number two. Mm -hmm. I'm actually thinking like after this album, the Scorpion album. I don't want to rate him with nobody else no more. Like, he Ty, deserved it. I, I got so much respect. Boy, <laughs> <laughs> well, he said call well, does he write? Because the, only, the only thing I'm having is, is, does he write his own music or not? Like, I don't like I, I I'll say this. Drake, he makes great music. Great music. But, um, you know, putting him in over... I would probably say Lil Wayne. Like, y'all would actually put him over Lil Wayne? Yeah. Cortez, who, who your top five? When you actually used to listen right, to right. rap back in the day, who was your top five? So, um, so Nas is up there. You can't. You can't. Yeah. No, we got. We got to do Nas. You, you can't make that wrong. Everybody else. You can't do that. That's, 
can't do that wrong. <laughs> they in their own category. All right, so we, we Nas number one. So who we put? Oh, I, this is no order, just. Okay, just your top five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I put Nas in there. I put, um, um, so I put DMX in there for me personally. DMX was. No, I, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll agree with that one. Yeah, yeah, so DMX, Nas. Um, <laughs> Biggie is definitely in there. So you put Big in there. Um, you got to throw Eminem in there. Yeah. And, um, and then that last slot can go to either. Uh, uh, yeah, I didn't even mention any of the locks, though. I thought you were going to say Jada Kiss, man. Yeah, my gosh, man. I like Kiss. I don't know. Um, that's hard, man. Because you, you still got Pop, you still have Jay Z. You know? Um, so. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, just, I can't. I can't really. I don't know, man. I gotta think about that voice. Yo, Mo, who you, who you think your top five, man? What's your top five? Um, like she said, excluding like Tupac, Biggie, people like that. You know, what just because that's like that's man. Like top five. I wouldn't put Drake in my top five though. What? You know, what that's man? a little because confusing. She, she, I wouldn't put him in my top ten because. <laughs> <laughs> why? why? Why would you put Drake, Drake in top ten? Explain that. You talking about, about lyricists, right? Or yeah, lyricists. Don't get me wrong. I think Drake is talented. I think he write, write a lot of his music, but. We always, you know, from my era hip hop, we like we we would uh, follow out if we found out Jay Z right. ain't right his rhyme. Right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Nas ain't right his rhyme. Yeah. So right. they're always gonna tarnish him, even though I but believe is he that writes. True. It's true. You know what I'm saying? It's definitely true. You know what I'm saying? He admitted it. And even though he writes for other people and he writes for himself, but it still kind of tarnishes you because we don't know your best lines. Somebody else may have wrote them. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Even though Drake, because he a talented artist, you know, but it's just hard for me to put you in that top five. Because Jadakiss, we don't think nobody never wrote for Jadakiss, even though it's possibly somebody yeah. could, but we don't know. We don't, you know what I'm saying? We don't want to believe it, you know. So. Yeah. So, so what about Fabulous? Oh, Fabulous. I put Fabulous up there, Jadakiss, um, you know, uh, who else artists I like? Uh, I like Sky Zoo, he's from New York, and uh, who else? Um, What's the five nine? You know what I'm saying? Uh, people like that. You know, I like them. My top five. Artists. How y'all feeling about Davies? And oh yeah, Dave, I like Davies. I put him in Casanova. Y'all didn't even bring up like Herbo or Tory Lanez. Nobody. You be like G Herbo. But Tory, is, Tory, Tory is, is Tory considered? That's kind of like Drake. Is he considered hip hop? I mean, rap. Tory can rap. I ain't gonna front. Tory Lanez can rap. Nasty. He rap now, but I just don't. I don't look at him as a rap guy, I guess he's seen too, so it's kind of, you know. <laughs> yeah, see, you know but that's saying? like Trey Song. But when I do hear him rap, he's like, Drake, he's nice. You get know what I'm saying? Like, he actually nicer than Drake when it comes to the to rapping, really, you know, but he's just not as popular as, you know. Y'all gonna stop trying to play Drake <laughs> at this Drake table. Why? <laughs> I like, I like, I'm a big fan of Herbo. I'm a big fan of Tory Man. And you know what? Speaking so of. So, what about Trey Song? He rap. Trey Song. Trey Song. Yeah. Trey Song. The RB nice. singer? He is nice. Ain't never had a Y'all gonna have to show what me about something. Kevin Hart? Everybody hurts. Hot to drop a rap, <laughs> yeah. bro. I got you number one, bro. <laughs> So speaking of uh, Drake, man, and uh, Young Money, uh, actually, I think Lil Wayne actually they didn't they agree to a deal uh, for him actually come out with the uh, the Carter Five. Yeah. I was what's, what's going on with I don't that? Know the details. But yeah, uh, from what I've told, man, he actually got that finally worked out with Bird, man, and uh, you know they came up with some type of deal, and he's actually coming out with his uh, his Carter Five. Yes, sir. So Aaron, you didn't tell us your top five. My top five. Number one would probably be DMX. Since y'all said whatever this rule came from, since I can't say J C <laughs> um, I would probably say Eminem would probably be number two. Um, after Eminem, I would probably say can we I can't say Nas. I can't put him in there. He can't he can't be in there either. Alright, um Number three, I would probably say I'll probably say Jadakus. I would actually put him as number three. I would definitely put him as number three. Um, actually, as a strong number four, I would put like Styles P right behind him. Yeah, when you, that's why when I was saying like Jadakus, you automatically got to add. And of course, my my top five like is definitely man KRS One. Like I, I I couldn't get I couldn't you really listen to him. He's a great. He's a great. Yeah, he's a classic. You can't. He's a great no guy. Classics. Um, he came around the same time DMX came. It's just like on the tip of my tongue. 
what's his name? See, right around when uh, Ja Rule. Ja Rule? No. <laughs> Damn. See how they. Uh, uh, y'all, y'all see how they play me on my own show? <laughs> it's murder. <laughs> <laughs> was he was he on the Rough Riders uh, regular? No, he was actually oh. the one that beef with LL. Oh, cannabis. 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 Yeah. J. Cole was actually. Oh, yeah, everybody about skip cannabis. Skip yeah, J. Cole, because. But I, you can't. Uh, you can't have cannabis. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I don't know. It's, it's, it's so many times. I think it's our generation, too. Yeah. I'm going to call my daughter in here. I ain't hear none of y'all say Lil Yachty or. Um, what's his name? Lil Pop? What do you call it? Like these days, the mumble rap or something yeah. like that? Yeah, I think it's all based on the generation. Yeah. On generation. Cause I, I grew up with what? LL Cool J and Biggie Smalls and Tupac and all right. them. But I mean, these days, I don't know what you call it rap or hip hop or what you call it. So what do you mean? I mean, some song you can though. Exactly. So where do y'all see um, hip hop in the next couple of years? Like? Next couple of years? I mean, the way it's going now, man, it's, it's just totally different. Like, it's, it's it's different. Like, you know, even like the style and the culture of it, man, it's just changing. Do so y'all think that will go back to baggy jeans? I think so. That that old saying about how history repeats itself, it, it will. Just like the 90s, like right now, in the 80s, that, that type of uh, that style. So I, I do yeah. think it will come back at some point. And if you know, the whole lot of the 90s stuff's coming back. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people sticking to the 90s. It is. It is. Kids, you want to say something? Your top five rappers? Mm-hmm. Your top five rappers? Do you listen to much of a rapper? You rap yourself? Mm-mm. You rap yourself? Who's your, who's your top five right now? Because you're from a different generation. Again, guys, this is uh, Jonathan's daughter. She's just going to talk to us a little bit about, uh, you know, I guess what the young kids listen to these days. Um, T Herbo. Bang! Jonathan told her to say that, guys. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you. I was like, you got around? <laughs> <laughs> oh, now she actually did mention a good one. Like, what do you, what do you guys think about Feature? Feature? Yeah. He's okay. Y'all, y'all like his style? Yeah, I like Feature. He's a good vibe. This is more so like that vibe two type music. Right. Yeah. I don't have a vibe. You do you listen to more RB? I listen to multiple people. I just can't name them at the moment. You yeah. like Little Yachty? I like some of his music. He kind of became too mainstream now for me to listen to him. So is that how he got his break this underground? It was actually underground artist? Little Pump. Yeah, Little Pump. Um, I wouldn't say he was like underground. Punk. He could start off as a SoundCloud rapper. Oh. How about the guy that died at Temptation? Yeah. It's, it's Temptation. Temptation. Yeah, Temptation. He was good. I'm Some of his music was good. Six nine. Oh. I he's not good. His music is catchy, mm-hmm. so I kind of listen to. Parties. That's what you listen to. Y'all listen they to don't that. play his music. <clears throat> no. They play um. So y'all listen to music. Best words at the parties. Who plays clean words? Oh. He found find some information out. <laughs> <laughs> Well, since we finding information out on people, go ahead and get my daughter. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> So Dad, did you um, do you listen to any of Bad Baby? Is that the best the girl? Bad baby? Barbie, bad Barbie. Bad oh. Do you the girl that they catch me on song yet? Not do not really. Know? I haven't heard her music. I listen to one song. Catch me outside girl. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> catch me outside, how about that? We got some questions for you. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the show. <laughs> um, I know you love listening to music. You, you never listen to the stations I want to listen to. Do you have any favorite artists you like listening to on your phone? Yes. And what are they? Who are some of the people that you like? The Weeknd. You like The Weeknd? Like, Weeknd is actually, he's actually a good singer. How, how long he... <laughs> <laughs> Really, Ramon. Really. Don't, he caught right at the right time. Don't worry, we'll edit that out. 
So what are your, your favorite songs uh, with The weekend? What do you like the best about The weekend? Is there any special songs you like from when you're listening to them? I like um, The Heels. The Heels? Yes. You like that song? Do you listen to a lot of rap also, or do you just like Not more really. so singing? You don't like rap, do you? I, I like it. I it, guess. Are there any type of rappers that you feel like you actually would listen to? Who? Cardi B. Oh, Cardi B. So that I guess now that can actually bring up our, our next conversation. Okay. Top five female artists. Uh oh. Make money move? Cortez. Put you on the spot. Wow. Top five female artists. Man, I go ahead and tell you. Um, when you were little, you like what's called? Uh Little Kim. I remember you used to have a little CD case in your book bag, Little Kim. I <laughs> run <laughs> <laughs> That's my baby right there, Lil' Kim. Yeah, he wasn't listening. Lil' Kim. Lil' Kim. But uh, as far as, yeah, Remy, Remy Ma. Yo, what, yeah, so she's, how do you feel uh, about that she, battle that she did with, uh, with, uh, what are you Nicki Minaj. Yeah, do you, you think she ripped her up? Yeah, I mean, anytime you rap on Ether, I mean, it's just classic. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, Ether's the ultimate diss track. But then they say I was technical about my my Drake not writing and stuff. She didn't write that. They said Pat wrote that. So Pat Poops? He actually wrote those lyrics for. I mean, he he came in. And uh, are you talking about the top five females? Okay, the classics or the now? No, we can't. You can't, we can't have nobody throw, like, classic. Nobody classic. Like what? Missy, uh, the Brat, and all them. Yeah. Salt and pepper. Oh, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> I, mean, I, would, I would probably say uh, Eve is probably my top number yeah. one female rap artist. Like Eve, she just goes bar for bar for like against any dude. I would probably say I would put her definitely number one. Um, since Lil' Kim can't say really Lil' Kim. Um, maybe, I can't even say Foxy Brown because she didn't even write her own lyrics, right? No. She, she never wrote any other lyrics? Who was actually a ghostwriter? Everybody. <laughs> they don't something else on my list that I miss. Like, we've all forgotten about AZ. Mm -hmm. AZ, yeah, really, 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 really talented artist, man. He's, uh, he's really. Yeah, you got the big pun in there, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, big pun. No, no, he's just, that's a classic. Mm -hmm. The pun is a classic. Like, wow. Eve is really in home category, too, because she done did a lot. She had. She well, I mean, what is, has she done besides uh, mm -hmm. acting and. Uh, she done did movies. She's done movies also? Mm -hmm. She got her own shows out, right? Ain't she? Don't yeah, she have a talk show? Yeah, she got a talk show. She got a talk show? It's like on YouTube? Yeah, but I think her biggest compliment was uh, Marin the Baby now. Yeah. <laughs> so he made a baby now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's news to me. <laughs> it's not really movies. too many female artists out that, I mean, you can put up against. Because right now it's just Nicki and Cardi and Remy. I think Remy, I like Remy though. Remy nice. Yeah. She can yeah. hold on against like most average dudes and stuff. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Cardi B, um, she, did she get married? They said she was already married, so I don't know. Married and pregnant, I think. Yeah, she's pregnant, but uh, I think she actually tied the knot with uh, Offset. They said she was married to him before he even did the engagement thing, so I don't really know. Mm. But it's really no female. Yeah, Cardi B blew up. She the biggest name. And music, I think. Right now? Yeah, music, yeah. She everywhere. Every time you turn on radio, cry. I don't really, you know, she cool. I liked her when she first started, but now she kind of over Did you, did you see her coming out like this? Did you see that coming? Like this? Mm, no, no. I've seen her blowing up a little bit, but I ain't seen her get like to, you know, she close to Nicki Minaj status, I think, really with the popularity wise. Yeah, you know. she, she's definitely there right now. Yeah, I so I didn't expect too. her to be that big. I expect her to be kind of like, but not like the way she is. Mm -hmm. you know? Beyonce been dropping them bars too now lately though. Those Jay Z written bars you're talking about? <laughs> <laughs> well, it came out with another record, didn't it? Mm -hmm. yep. So, how did y'all feel about the Boot Up remix? Which one? There's just a couple out there. Did y'all like Nicki and Quavo? Yeah, I think that song should have had a remix, right? Yeah. Who, who was the song? Nicki and Quavo? Nicki and Quavo. Oh, Nicki and Quavo. I ain't heard it. Oh, I ain't say nothing about Iggy is that you right? Probably because she rap. I didn't know she rap. Yeah, do. Is that it? I do. <laughs> Wait, who is that? <laughs> who? You talking about Shumpers? That's Girl. That's Wednesday. Oh. I'm sure that's pretty dope. Oh. So, like, um, money bag, you're a lot. 
Yeah. Y'all want some money back, yo? Yeah. Y'all like YF and Lucy? Yeah. Lucy and Zion. Good stuff. Good stuff. So, uh, guys, uh, for those of you who just actually came in and listening, we actually invited two more special guests. Uh, I invited my daughter on, Zariah Fisher, and also Jonathan's daughter, Kiasia Waters. Kiasia, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? You're Zero Dark 30? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Zero Dark 30. Yeah. 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 So, These I'm on, on, on the social media. <laughs> 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 I'm on a hiatus right now, but uh, I do hope to be back on social media before the end of the year. But we'll see. We'll see. Right. But yeah. All right, and Quintus, actually, you'll be back a lot sooner than the uh, the other gentlemen. You actually have a episode that you're going to be doing with us, so you guys uh, stay tuned for that. James, any last words, man? Anything you want to say? No, thank you for being on the show, man. You enjoy it? Yeah. All right. So we'll... I'm glad I'm one of your best friends. I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> So James, I, I think man, we need to do that uh, that wrestling podcast. I, I agree. I agree with you one hundred percent. I love to do that. <laughs> <laughs> what what y'all? What was that? Oh man, we love you. Remember the NWO? I remember man. WCW, what Monday Night Wolves and stuff. Man, you can't beat that. Which I used to pow wow at each other's houses. <laughs> man, I used to go back to TVs back and forth. Like, what in the world? <laughs> Did a fall day? What? Wait, be on uh, what Tuesday morning? <laughs> be at West Martin just carrying oh, on. Who God. won? We got road bikes over to each other's house. Yeah. You had a car. Yeah, 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 I had a car in great. Yeah, yeah, you know, Jody out. Body slamming people in the trunk. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, so now y'all want me to jokes. You might as well keep the show going, then. Yeah. <laughs> you might as well keep it going. It's getting live, now. Did y'all have, like, wrestling nicknames, too? I, I don't remember that. Did it? <laughs> I don't remember that. Those were the two fanatics. Yeah, but we, we always been big wrestling fans. I actually used to go to a lot. I think you went with this a few times. Yeah. Hey, Ramon, you actually went with this. That's how you did. Yeah, I think I went with y'all one time. Rusty still watch wrestling. I watch wrestling. I don't know, brother. Mm. Uh, that's a hard story, man. So, I mean, James, do you still want to be a wrestler? I love to be a wrestler. So tell tell the listeners, because I'm pretty sure there's some wrestling fans out there, some promoters that are probably looking for some up and coming talent. Yeah, tell them, man, your, might be this. tell them, tell them, your, tell them your weight size and what you. You've just listened to the Dramatic Show podcast with your host, Dramatic.